drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous sets of lectures we discussed about the different mechanical properties today we'll start a new topic we'll discuss about deformation and dislocation to begin with let us understand some of the basic concepts of deformation basically speaking as we have already discussed in some of the previous lecture deformation is of two types one is known as the elastic deformation and another is called plastic deformation now as the name suggests elastic deformation refers to recoverable deformation that is deformation which can be recovered back once the stress or the load is removed whereas the plastic deformation is the deformation which is caused permanently the plastic deformation cannot be recovered back so that is the basic difference between elastic and plastic deformation now during plastic deformation what happens is that a net movement of large number of atoms take place right so there is a net movement of atoms or rupturing of bonds taking place and motion of dislocations involved so as a result of this what will happen is that since the bonds are breaking it is a permanent deviation from the norm in elastic deformation the bonds do not break they extend thereby giving uh, extension whereas in plastic deformation the bonds actually break uh, which makes it permanent also the net movement as we see here there is a net movement of large no number of atoms which cannot return back to its initial position therefore that is permanent in nature last but th not the least the motion of dislocation is the very fundamental concept which drives plastic deformation we'll see that upcoming slides that for the plastic deformation to take place one of the basic requirement is that there has to be dislocation motion dislocation motion is what mainly drives plastic deformation dislocation motion okay so now let us see the relation between deformation and dislocation here we have shown a edge dislocation we'll use the example of edge dislocation because it is quite easy to visualize what exactly is happening but the same phenomena or rather parallel similar phenomena occurs in the case of screw dislocation too and screw dislocation also leads to deformation so here what do we have we have we have shown five sets of plane here and six sets of atomic planes at the top so basically this a set is the extra half plane of atoms which uh, does not have any extra half plane over here the rest of the half plane now due to and this is our dislocation line then this is where the dislocation uh, extra half plane is ending so this is the dislocation line now due to this extra half plane what will happen is that uh, if a shear force is applied that is if we apply a force like this a shear like this these atoms will try to move in this direction and these atoms will try to move in this direction but instead of all the atoms moving in this direction all the atoms moving in this direction what will happen is that this set of bonds the bonds over here for the bonds connecting this atom and this atom and the atoms behind those atoms will break and instead of this bonds new bonds will be created with these atoms okay so what scenario will give rise will get this scenario from this scenario so basically these bonds break 
the dislocation seems to move from this location to this location. The extra half plane seems to no longer exist here and move here. Okay, see here. The extra half plane now is no longer the extra half plane. Rather, B becomes the extra half plane because these bonds are broken and joined over here. The next step what will happen is the this bond will break and join here so the extra half plane comes to C then to D. This way the dislocation line keeps on moving in this plane till it reaches a surface or a grain boundary. Okay. So ultimately what will happen is this configuration. It will reach a edge, a surface and we'll get a step here. We'll get a unit step here. The extra half plane resides here on the surface which can be seen under a microscope. If you observe it under a microscope you can see that. And these planes are no longer extra half planes. There is no extra half plane within the bulk anymore. That has reached the surface, that has surfaced. And this way the dislocation motion gives rise to a deformation, right? And this was the case of one single dislocation. But in a real scenario, there are millions and millions of dislocation. When shear is applied, all those dislocations come into play. And once they come into play, they, there is the bulk effect lot of dislocations moving and the effect of each dislocation movement adds up thereby proper plastic deformation can be observed due to dislocation motion which is taking place. Here we have uh, presented the picture in a different uh, way. Here what we have is top is edge dislocation, bottom is screw dislocation. In the edge dislocation, if we apply a shear stress like this, what will happen is that this dislocation keeps on moving due to the uh, shear stress. This extra half plane keeps moving one step at a time, ultimately reaching the surface and we get a edge here. This is the same thing which we saw in the previous slide. To visualize the screw dislocation, the idea is that the screw dislocation is like this. Okay. And when we apply a shear, this screw dislocation will move in this direction, perpendicular to the shear. And that will result, this dislocation line will ultimately come till this surface and we will get a step over here and a step over here. So basically the dislocation line, the screw dislocation line has moved in this direction. The edge dislocation line has moved in this direction. Though the shear forces were in the same direction in both the cases. And ultimately both of them gives rise to similar structure. Or similar kind of deformation. Okay. Now in the case of our dislocation. The presence of dislocation leads to a stress field. Now how is the stress field is being visualized in this figure. As I have mentioned beforehand that this is the symbol of a edge dislocation, right? Here we have a positive edge dislocation that is the extra half plane is on the top. There is no plane corresponding at the bottom which means at the top we have more number of atoms squeezed in same amount of area. Here less number of atoms is squeezed in that area. Since there is more number of atoms here squeezed in a given area, there will be atoms pushing against each other. That is there is compression forces developing here. So where the extra half plane is present, there will be compressive lattice strain development. So here there is compression forces. Closest to the extra half plane, the amount of compression is the maximum. As we keep moving outward from the extra half plane, the 
magnitude of compressive force keeps on reducing and at a very far distance it fades to almost zero whereas at the bottom half where the extra half plane is missing there are less number of atoms thereby more space is available as a result there will be tension forces here the atoms will try to pull each other because more space is there less number of atoms are there so the absence of extra half plane results into tension forces okay this idea the idea about the lattice strain around a dislocation is quite fundamental because this will help you understand the interaction between dislocation and dislocation the interaction between dislocation and solute particles this will help you understand the different strengthening mechanisms which we'll see in the future lectures so be quite clear with this that the presence of extra half plane leads to compressive forces the absence of extra half plane leads to tensile condition tensile strain okay now let us see what are the dislocation interaction taking place let's say we have a extra half plane here positive extra half plane and let's say another positive extra half plane is here and let's imagine these two extra half planes are approaching each other now as i said the extra half plane will have a compressive regime here this is compression and this is tension this will also have a compression region a tension region when they come close enough what will happen is here is the compressive region here is the compressive region tensile region tensile region so the compressive regions extra half plane here extra half plane here the compressive regions coming close together will repel each other because now even more number of atoms are getting squeezed in the same amount of area and here even less number of atoms are getting squeezed in the same amount of area so if two uh, two extra half planes or if two dislocations of the same sign approach each other they will repel each other repel same sign extra half planes repel each other on the other hand if we have a positive ex dislocation and a negative dislocation we'll have compressive re region tensile region tensile region compressive region given they approach each other what will happen is the compressive region and the tensile region will overlap and they will cancel out the effect of each other right thereby the internal strain that was present due to the individual dislocations will reduce and that is what a system wants a system wants to reduce its internal strain it wants to reduce its internal energy right its energy energetically it is favorable for opposite dislocations to come together therefore this will opposite dislocations will attract each other because of the compressive and the tensile regime they will attract each other and once they come together what will happen is both the dislocations will disappear and that will give rise to a complete plane rather than two extra half planes so annihilation of two dislocations will take place if the two opposite dislocations move along the same plane okay so one dislocation here another dislocation here moving along the same plane then annihilation can take place suppose there is a one dislocation here and another dislocation here and suppose there are two atomic layers in between what will happen what will happen is that 
there is an alternative method that can take place for the two dislocations to come in the same plane. That method is known as climb. We'll not go into the details of it, but the idea behind climb is that atoms can jump not only on the slip plane, it can not only move on the slip plane, but perpendicular to the slip plane. We'll discuss what slip plane is. Basically, slip plane is the plane on which dislocations move. In the case of climb, atoms or the dislocation can basically move even perpendicular to the slip plane. And as a result, what can happen is that the dislocation ends up in the same slip plane and then they annihilate. But for climb to take place, temperature has to be high. High temperature supports climb because climb requires diffusional processes and higher temperature helps diffusion. Okay, th this was not very important but just to give you a holistic picture, I told you about climb. But what was more take home from this uh, slide over here was that the uh, different dislocations interact with each other. Similar dislocations repel, opposite dislocations attract and while attracting they can even cancel out each other completely thereby reducing the strain within the system reducing the energy within the system this brings uh, a closure to today's lecture just to give you a glimpse of what we studied today we discussed about elastic and plastic deformation we saw how dislocation leads to deformation how dislocation movement takes place what is the dislocation property was what is the strain associated with a dislocation and how does two dislocation interact with each other with these idea i'll close today's lecture next lecture we'll build further upon this knowledge have a great day goodbye